Today I'm going to show you how I made these jalapeno popper sausages. My name's Craig. Welcome to the Gourmet Woodsman. Well, here's some bacon I made a while ago. I'm going to use this in my jalapeno popper sausages. It takes kind of a ridiculous amount of bacon to make these. I mean, look at how much fat is in that. What happens is it renders down. It takes almost five pounds of bacon to get one pound of cooked bacon but we need to cook the bacon. And I want a lot of bacon in these because uh, they're jalapeno poppers and it's a big part of it. I'm just cutting really fat strips. I'll probably cut this into lardons and crisp those up because that's the easiest way to fit it in a pan. And uh, I don't feel like getting my slicer all dirty right now. And I'm not making strips to eat. They just need to crisp up for going into the sausage. They're all going to get ground up anyway, so this is going to work just beautifully for me. I do plan on making a bacon video at some point, but it's going to be a while, and I might just have to wait till I get another pig. And then, it's a challenge, because honestly, I like the pancetta so much more than I like bacon. And you can buy pretty good bacon, it's hard to find good pancetta, and when you do, it's super expensive. So, we'll see. I'll probably try to make some, but it might be a while. All right, time to weigh the spices for these popper sausages. I always like to toast the seeds and peppercorns if I can. So I'm going to weigh up my peppercorns first. You want to have a pretty accurate scale for this because it makes a pretty big difference if you want to have repeatable results. I'm going to put my peppercorns in a dry pan. Go toast those off real quick. While that's toasting, I will mix up my cure and my spices. Because I'm going to be smoking these, I'm going to use Instacure number one. Next, going in with salt. Garlic powder. Going in with some onion powder. Going in with some smoked paprika. And a little bit of cayenne pepper. Last thing for this popper spice mix. Uh, my black pepper is toasted off. Gonna add that. Okay, here's my cure and spices. Just gotta finish cooking up that bacon. And I also want to put in my binder, and today I'm gonna use non fat dry milk powder. It's non fat dry milk powder from the sausage maker. It's a little different than the stuff at the store in that it's a high heat non fat dry milk powder as opposed to a low heat, which is what you'll find at the grocery store. They taste very similar, but they're able to bind with the water better than the cold low heat. So that's why I use that as the binder. For my jalapeno popper sausages, I'm going to use some lean beef. I'm going to use some relatively lean pork. And I'm going to use some pork belly fat. Back fat would be perfectly fine to use. That's what I would usually use. I'm using belly fat because I want to save my back fat for salamis. But if you're going to the butcher and trying to buy fat, back fat, belly fat, I would buy back fat. But I'm trying to use my animal appropriately and I think, I think back fat makes more sense for salamis. I think belly fat makes more sense for sausages. I don't know if you can see my thermometer, this is way too cold. I chilled it in the freezer. You want to give it maybe 30 to 45 minutes. I got busy with some other things. It's been in there a couple hours. My big grinder might be able to handle it, but that's going to be hard on my grinder. I like between 28 and 32 degrees. I'll also be using bacon, jalapeno, and cream cheese that I froze before I cubed, and then I've been keeping it in my freezer until I use it. Now that my meat's warmed back up to like 28 or 29 degrees, it's time to grind it. I'll be using a 4 millimeter plate today. I'm also going to add my jalapenos and my cooked crispy bacon that's been in the freezer. And I'm going to take a handful of my meat, just run it through, make sure I get all that, everything out, especially that bacon and the uh, pepper. Looking good. Mmm, look at all the green. You can see the dark brown from the bacon. All right, so let's make sure it's below 35 degrees and we're good to go. There's the spices in the binder. Add most of my water. Might add all of it. We'll see what it seems like. 
Yeah, well, I had it. Why not? Once it starts getting a little sticky, and you can see, definitely starting to get some sort of strandy, furry-ish material extraction happening. That's when I want to add my cream cheese. Which is frozen. The easiest way to cut this into cubes is to partially freeze it first. Sticking pretty good there. Now I've got my casing loaded onto the horn. I'm using 30-32 millimeter hog casings today. And we'll see how this goes. I'm a little nervous because I did something I shouldn't, I know I shouldn't do. So I had something come up yesterday. Adding the curity over meat and putting it in the refrigerator overnight is perfectly fine, but I added my binder and I know that's gonna make it thick and pasty. And I think it might give me a really hard time stuffing. And I'm nervous what it might do to the final product, but I guess it'll be a little bit of an experiment. So I'm just trying to keep enough pressure on my horn on this casing to keep any air bubbles from going back up the casing that's loaded up, threaded onto the horn. Turns out it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be to stuff those, so that's good. So again, I, I'm a one direction linker. A lot of people will pinch and go towards you, pinch the next one away from you. I just like to do skip them. If you want to be more professional, you can put a mark on your tray and make sure every sausage is pretty close to the same size. But I figure, you know, it's just how it is, man. We don't all get the same size sausage. Some of us will get a bigger sausage, some will get a smaller sausage. It's just the way it works. But if you want to have a more uniform sausage size, you can put a mark on your tray and just measure each one. You can link them individually as they come off the horn. It's just slower, but it does ensure a perfect sausage for every one. Well, it doesn't ensure it, but it hedges your bets, increases your odds. Because these have already cured overnight, I'm not worried about them curing more. But I do need to dry these casings out before I cook them. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna leave them on this rack. I'm gonna put them in front of a fan just to try to dry this casing out a bit before I start smoking them. Probably about an hour in front of a fan. And then go put them on the smoker. After about an hour in front of the fan, room temperature here, you can see how much these have darkened and dried out quite a bit. So the jalapeno popper sausages are ready for the smoker. Since I haven't replaced or fixed my smoker since the bear knocked it over and screwed it up, I don't really like how little smoke the electric one makes at low temperatures. I'm using this propane grill for heat and my smoke generator for smoke. You know, it's not great, but you know, it works okay. I'm gonna make do with it. Okay, pulled those breakfast sausages off and kind of rotated the things around. Things that were up top went down, but here is the cool spot. These were down there, went up here. All the uh, jalapeno cheddar ones just stayed in the same spot. They're all riding pretty good. Jalapeno, jalapeno cheddar, jalapeno popper, they can take more smoke, so we'll keep them going out here. All right, jalapeno popper sausages. Into the ice bath. Stop them from cooking. Yeah, let's give them about five minutes. 10 minutes, five minutes. Well, it's time to try these sausages. See what they're all about. Let's see the jalapeno, little bits of cream cheese. Well, let's see if they got a snap to them. Mm -hmm. This is actually a little too intense for me for a sausage. I don't need my bacon in my sausage. Um, plus the cream cheese. I mean, it's delicious, but Feels like it might be a heart attack waiting to happen. Yeah, I feel like these can't really be served as whole sausages. You gotta just, you gotta cut them into coins. P 
people can each have a coin of it get a taste because it does taste good but after a few pieces man it starts to feel really rich like i'm not joking when i say it's a heart attack waiting to happen it's really good it tastes like a jalapeno popper you taste the bacon the jalapeno the smokiness don't know if you taste the cream cheese but you certainly feel the richness it's really delicious that said it's, it's a bit much for me i love bacon and i like sausage but i don't need my bacon in my sausage that said it is good i wouldn't mind sharing you know everyone gets a slice perfect that way but uh yeah and it really does taste like a jalapeno popper so hey if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you like my content subscribe to my channel put some love into what you make peace